He's an international award-winning gospel artist. He's, an, he's a pastor, he's a songwriter, and he's also a proud husband, father, and grandfather. And today he's joining us on Hello Nigeria. He's not alone. We'll be introducing our very special guest this afternoon. It's a beautiful day, the last day in the month of September. One to definitely remember. Ladies and gentlemen, please make very welcome Don Moen. Yes. Thank you, Thank you so much for joining us. Thank Thank and much. right beside me is Baba Lola, Emmanuel Babalola. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. This feels like the hallmark of, it feels like my the um, crown of my September. I feel like my <laughs> September was crowned in such an amazing way because it's such an honor to interview you. Yes, sir. Thank you. It is. Okay, so yeah. let's take you back to music. At what point did you know you were called to do music? Uh, prob probably when I was a little boy. I mean, I, I loved music uh, since I was a little uh, little kid, and my mother used to make up these songs all the time to to the to all of us children. There's four children, and uh, she'd make up songs about everything. And when I went to bed at night, I remember her playing uh, a lot of the old standards, Frank Sinatra stuff, old hymns. But I'd go to bed at night with her playing the piano, and. Um, so uh, I ended up studying violin at an early age. Violin was what went my, my major instrument, and that's what put me through college. And, and then later in uh, university, I got interested in guitar and some songwriting. And, and uh, yeah, I never intended to make a career out of this, but I always loved music, you know. Wow. Yeah. Was it, was it self-taught in terms of you playing the violin, or did you no, go I to studied. school to learn it? Yeah, I studied seriously. and. Uh, um, played in a lot of symphonies and operas and ballets. That's what I did, and that's what I thought I would do the rest of my life. So, I still love picking up my violin and playing yes. it. But it, it's uh, now I end up playing piano and singing <laughs> a lot. You know. Yes. Now uh, you're. I mean, you've um, sung in probably I don't know how many countries in the world or continents, perhaps yeah, I would yeah. say. Yet when we meet you, you're so down to earth. You're so humble. It's almost as if I can walk past you and just hi. <laughs> you know how do you? keep grounded because you have people shouting your name yeah. you see people probably with placards telling you they love you mm -hmm. and that can get to your head but you have yeah. remained very down to earth how have you done that all well, I think years? a lot of it success didn't come real early for me I mean I was uh, I traveled with a singing group all over the world for like 10 years uh, raising our own support I never even had a salary but we would sing a concert in the morning at a school a concert in the afternoon and then a concert in the evening, and then then I'd stay not at a five star hotel, but at uh, somebody's house on their couch, yeah. and then I'd get up and do the same thing again the next day, about three hundred and thirty days a year for ten years. So that's like a thousand concerts a year, for ten years, wow. and never getting paid for one of them. So you know when you do that, I think you you don't take yourself really seriously. Yeah. So by the time I was. Uh, I sang to you know over ten thousand people. Probably I was four, in my forties, early forties. So it's not like I woke up one day and I was singing to thousands of people. So because of the process, I think I I, I never take myself real seriously. And so uh, and I've always realized if I'm on a platform, uh, there are a lot of people in the audience that think uh, Don is untouchable and I can never be like Don. So I go out of my way to try to make sure they know that I'm a normal guy mm -hmm. and, and approachable. And of course, uh, having a wonderful wife supporting me oh. and uh, five children, they all keep me pretty grounded, grounded. as well. <laughs> okay, yeah. we'll still come back to speaking with you, but let's talk to Emmanuel for a bit. You have a concert coming up, and of all the artists in the world, you decided to pick Domon, which is of course a very fantastic choice. What informed that decision? Yeah, for more than 15 years now, I've been pursuing him. I've been following him up, listening to all the music. I know all, all, the, all his music. Aww. And one day I said to myself, I, I need to be on the same stage with this great man. <laughs> and it's happening. And Congratulations. It's happening. Dreams do come true. Yes, yes, yes. yes, like for us too, it's such Thank a God. pleasure. Because I, I remember as far back as when I was young, I used to <laughs> listen to your songs. My parents used to play it in your house. Yeah. Yeah. I would never have imagined that I would be on the same set with you, yeah. interviewing you as opposed to just... It's beautiful. I would love to be in the same place where you're ministering, but like sitting with you and interviewing you is a dream come true. Now, there are lots of young gospel artists who look up to you as an inspiration, mm -hmm. but when you were starting out, who were the people you were looking up to? I think as far as leading worship, um, one of the first guys that really inspired me was Andre Crouch. Because mm -hmm. uh, he, was, he was one of the first, they, they, he didn't call himself a worship leader, but he was one of the first, guy, first uh 
uh, musicians that really, I, I think, involved the congregation, involved the people, and it was it was a different kind of music. But Andre was a he was a good friend of mine, and uh, and I toured with him for a while. But I always was uh, inspired by the way he he approached the songs and and really led people into God's presence. Mm. Uh, and even then, I wasn't trying to be like him. I, then I was playing guitar and uh, bass guitar. I wasn't even a singer then. Mm -hmm. But um, but he, he inspired me in right. those early years. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, we've also um, realized or noticed that you've come to Nigeria a bit more frequently, or Africa, I would say, yeah. in recent <laughs> times. And indeed, you have actually identified some young talents in Nigeria. One of such is Frank Edwards. And you're yeah. actually working with him um, in the near future. Yeah. What is this? Um, what was what inspired this? Why did you decide to come to Africa more frequently? And what's your interest in young Nigerian yeah. musicians? Well, for, first of all, I was invited uh, by... Uh, Pastor Paul uh, Adolfarson from uh, House on the Rock, okay. and he was the first person to bring me here for the event called The Experience, and uh, that was, what, 10 years ago or 11 years ago now, mm -hmm. so, uh, and, and I don't know, I just kept getting invitations from Nigerian churches, so I, you know, three or four times a year I was in Nigeria, and I would hear these artists, and over the 10-year period of time, uh, I can see how the, the musicians have developed, the songwriting has developed, and uh, because of the uh, multi-artist event, like the experience, I got a chance to see some of the best talent in Nigeria. So I have always prayed, I'm a, I'm a producer, yeah. I, I was the president of a record label, Integrity Music, for 20 years, and what I did was try to identify talent and identify great songs, and so I can't no matter how old I get, I'm always that guy. <laughs> so when I hear somebody that moves me, and that 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 I I just remember sitting on the side of the stage and watching Frank Edwards, mm -hmm. and I thought, wow, this guy is a lot like me. I can almost see myself in the way he plays the piano and he sings. So it's it's funny because I'm this kind of old middle of the road white guy and then you got Frank who's kind of an edgy guy, yes. but his heart of worship is the same as mine. And so. Um, and I, I just, I don't want to start a huge label, but I want to be able to give a platform to young uh, artists in, in, in Nigeria that 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 need a little push. And yes. over the years, I've I, I've been able to identify uh, several uh, artists that are that I really identify with. And as God gives me the ability, I want to I want to help them. That's and Frank great. and I have done a yeah, we've done a collaboration. Yes, you have. And, and he's got me singing it. in Ebo and oh. <laughs> Oh, oh yes, that's I, the most interesting I should have part. never let him do that because <laughs> now I've opened that door and no matter where I go, yeah. I'm going to have to sing in Igbo. Oh, yes. Know, and we love beautiful. to hear you yeah. speak our language and yeah. sing in our language. Beyond it, our, it, our language here in Nigeria, have you tried out any of our Nigerian foods yet? Oh, yeah, it's spicy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't want to eat the spicy uh, soup before you get on a long airplane ride. Uh, yes, oh my goodness. Uh, yeah. I can imagine. But, okay, yeah. so yeah. you have the event coming up yeah. this weekend. Please tell yeah, us about weekend. it. Yeah, we, the East, we start starting today okay. by 12. Then we're having a worship seminar with all the worship leaders. We actually want them to impact uh, uh, Nigerian worshippers, the worship leaders, mm -hmm. the choristers, so that they understand the basic things they need to know as a worship leader. So it's starting today at 12 noon at Banana Island, uh, Ekoi. 12 noon? 12 noon today. That's like right now. Right now. <laughs> and starting now. now. So from now starting up now. until Sunday. From now, from tomorrow, we're going to have a concert by 4 p.m. Okay. We're done. We'll be ministering. Frank Edward will be ministering. Oh, great. Ben will be ministering. Oh, wow. Uh, Honors will be ministering. Oh. Even the church choir will be ministering. Olives. Tribe of Asa. We have quite a number of people that we. <laughs> I'm not saying because my name is Colin. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. yeah so right. Right. Now, I think so, before we let you go, I definitely want to ask you two questions that I'll put two in one. Okay. And then um, Olive would um, ask you her question. Number one is your family. You're known to celebrate your wife, you know, publicly and even, um, you know, in person. I've got, yeah. uh, met, and you, there's a deep love and relationship. Yeah. She has stood by you for ma many years. Mm -hmm. And we do know that musicians are not the easiest men to be married to or people to yeah. be married to because your life is so dynamic, you're on the road most mm -hmm. of the time, and she's so supportive. I mean, could you tell us what has kept you married for so long and kept your family you know, together for so long? Well, Laura and I have been married uh, 43 years. In fact, we got married after a concert 
<laughs> in, in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, uh, 43 years ago. She wasn't a musician. She was a nanny for the uh, evangelist's daughter. So uh, we got married after a concert, um, and I had a thousand people at my wedding that I didn't know because we invited <laughs> the audience to stay. It was, it was at a theater in Minneapolis, and so uh, we had one day off, and then we kept uh, touring and staying in people's homes. So Laura's been with me uh, in ministry all these years. Uh, and before I ever led worship, uh, I got a letter one time from her, one of her sisters. And it said, she said, uh, she was praying for Laura, and she said, I saw, as I was praying for Laura, I saw Don standing in front of thousands of people, uh, uh, leading them into God's presence, and writing songs that soothe the hearts of King. And kings and and I, I said to Laura, honey, your sister's a great lady, but she's not a prophet. I don't want to stand in front of thousands of people. Uh, a couple of years ago, she found the letter in her Bible, and it went on to say, "My real strength is going to come from Laura standing behind the wings of the stage, oh, wow. giving me the support." And that that's you talk about being grounded, Laura. Uh, she's so real. She keeps me grounded. I miss her when she's not oh. here. Uh, She'd be here this uh, weekend with me, but uh, she's having a sister's weekend oh. uh, with, right. her, with her family. But that's, you know, that's kind of what keeps me uh, grounded. And she's not a, she can't, she doesn't criticize my arrangements. Uh, but if I write a new song um, and I try to, tr I play it for her, uh, if she doesn't, it doesn't move her, it's usually not a great song. I she know this is really so inspiring because we live in an era where we have marriages that haven't lasted this long. Yeah. And yours has lasted for 43 yes. years. Yeah. It's so inspiring. Thank you so very much for sharing this yeah. with us. Yes. We're hoping that people out there watching will take a cue yes. from what you have said and have learned. And we look forward to seeing you, Minister. Is event free for all? Yeah, free. Oh, Fantastic. great. We and of course, on Facebook, people. Twitter, Instagram, people can follow you because you do post very inspirational um, messages. If people wanted to follow you beyond the lifetime yeah. of this. Yeah, that's true. We've got the YouTube channel, okay. Don, Don Moen TV, and that's all free stuff we're, we're posting all the time yes. uh, as well. So I would have loved for you to sing, but I know that you're going for your concerts because it has already started <laughs> yeah. now. But yeah. then, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. All right, Great. have a lovely yes, day. Yeah. Have well. a wonderful yeah. week. Thank we'll go on a quick break so now. We've been speaking with Domwen and we've been speaking with Emmanuel Babalola. When we come back from this break, the show continues. Please stay with us. To enjoy more of these our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.